Hey there, everyone. Good morning. Let's do a fun problem where we get to blow some stuff up, shall we? The description is a bit lengthy since there's a couple concepts mixed in, but here's the short version. There's this rocket containing some fireworks that's just sitting on the ground. Once we light the fuse, it takes off and begins to move upwards into the air. Eventually, the rocket will reach 80 meters in altitude before exploding. And as you can see, there's two leftover chunks of the rocket that go flying off in opposite directions, and they hit the ground at the same time. Part A wants us to figure out the speed of each chunk following the explosion. Then in part B, we need to find the separation distance between them. For reference, I'm going to call the more massive chunk A and the smaller one B. Let's begin with the conservation of momentum in the horizontal direction. Right before the explosion, there is no horizontal movement, so we have zero on the left-hand side of this equation. Then, immediately following the explosion, we have the momenta of each leftover rocket chunk on the right. I'm going to move the momentum of A over to the left-hand side, and then solve for the velocity of A by dividing both sides by A's mass. Let's move on to the conservation of energy next which states that the sum of the kinetic energies of both chunks is equal to the 860 joules that's released by the explosion. We need to plug in the expression for the velocity of A that we just solved for and then square it. Doing so will eliminate the mass of A outside the parentheses in the first term and result in the following. From here, we can factor out the entire expression of the kinetic energy of B, and then divide both sides by the leftover stuff in the parentheses. It's not exactly a nice denominator on the right, so let's take a moment to fix the form of what we have there. I'm going to multiply 1 by a special form of 1 and then combine the fractions into a single ratio. Remember that dividing a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we can now flip it right side up. And now there's a pretty equation for the kinetic energy of B. Let's plug in the value of the masses and calculate its value. I get about 717 joules using three digits. We're going to need the kinetic energy of A as well. And thankfully, we don't have to do this algebraic process all over again. Let's just subtract 717 from the 860 joules total. And now we have A's kinetic energy. That makes it really easy. We're going to use these energy values to solve for the horizontal velocities of the chunks after the explosion. I'll begin with B. To isolate the velocity, we're going to multiply both sides by two and divide both sides by B's mass. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. When you plug in the numbers and stick this into a calculator, you should get approximately 71.6 meters per second. It's the exact same process for A, except with different values. As you might expect, the larger mass has a much smaller share of the energy and thus only reaches a speed of about 14.3 
meters per second. And with those two speeds known, we're now done with part A. For part B, we're going to have to figure out the time it takes for both fragments to hit the ground before we can calculate that separation distance, x. Let's break out the following kinematic equation. I'm going to simplify our approach here and call the final y value of the ground zero. Let's swing the negative term over to the other side and then multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by g, and then take the square root of both sides as well. With the numbers inserted, we find that the time it takes for these chunks to hit the ground is about 4.04 seconds. Let's take this time and use it to figure out how far the individual fragments move first, beginning with A. All we need to do is multiply the velocity that we solved for by the time that we just got. And we get a distance of 57.8 meters specifically for chunk A. Next up is B. Exact same approach here. You multiply B's velocity by the fall time and you get a distance of about 289.3 meters for that piece. To get the full separation distance, x, we're going to take those two distances and add them together. And answering to three digits, you can see at the bottom that we get approximately 347 meters for the final answer of B. Both parts are finished and we're done. That's it. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.